I love when coaches, consultants, and professional service providers want to do big things in their business. They want to rise to the top and influence their market and the world around them. They want to have a greater impact and make a more lucrative income. Well, if this is you, welcome to Expert in You podcast, the show where I interview other experts and coaches, consultants, so that they can share their success strategies with you. We're going to talk about marketing and how to close more sales, how to get more premium clients and how to really build your visibility in the market and scale your business like a boss. If this is you, welcome to the show. I want to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss one episode. Grab your coffee and buckle up because we are ready to give it all to you to help you become the expert and get paid as the expert that you are. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another show of Expert in You podcast. I'm your host, Dan Carden. And today I have Dr. William Attaway with me. And I know you're going to love hearing from him because he is doing some really cool things out there with leadership and uh, leadership development. And so I'm very excited to have him on the show. So welcome. And thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We are so excited to have you on. So you are an ex- an executive and a leadership coach. But you have a brand called Catalytic Leadership, and it's really for entrepreneurs and founders. So I would love for you to just share a little bit about what is Catalytic Leadership. You know, and it comes out of my own story. When I went to college, I went as a pre-pharmacy major. I had worked in a pharmacy in high school and thought that would be a great way to invest my life and help people. I made it to organic chemistry and decided that this is not really what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. (laughs) You see my tongue hanging out? Okay, if you're listening to the audio version, you can't see my tongue hanging out or my eyes roll back like, oh, chemistry. (laughs) Go ahead. I feel the same way, (laughs) which is why I'm not a pharmacist today. Okay, there we go. (laughs) You know, it's funny, though, that, that God never wastes an experience. You know, even what we think is just a waste of time and a wrong turn, because in my brief chemistry studies, I was introduced to the concept of a catalyst. A catalyst is something that you introduce into a mixture to incite or to accelerate significant change. And I had been a student of leadership for nearly a decade at that point. And as I thought about the great leaders that I had learned from and studied and read about, I thought, you know, they would really resonate with that definition. You know, something that you that you bring into incite or to accelerate significant change, to make an impact, to make a difference. And that's really where I began to merge those two ideas of what it means to be a catalytic leader. Because the great leaders, they want to see something change. They want to see something, they want to see an impact. They want to see a difference made. They want to be a part of that. They yeah. want to lead that. Mm-hmm. And so that's where the term comes from. It's from my own story. Awesome. That's a great story. Um, so let's dive into this a little bit. First of all, you have been doing this for how long? I've been coaching leaders now for just over 20 years. That's a long time. And you have a background as a pastor or you still are a pastor, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Both. Yeah, it's true. And so what <laughs> did a lot of that come? Were you doing a lot of that um, in, you know, in your church and and with the leaders in your church and things like that? For sure, for sure. And, and so many of the, the ideas and principles that I use now with clients came from trying them out first inside of a mm. church context. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I moved into church world from the business world. And so I brought with me these ideas that there are, maybe there's better ways to do things. Maybe there are different ways to look at mm-hmm. some, some problems that churches seem to get stuck in. And now pivoting back into the business world and helping business leaders and entrepreneurs and founders to to look at things in a different way, Mm -hmm. I can bring the experience from both spheres, both sectors and say, hey, let's let's talk about this. I love it. I I mean, that is so often things find us, don't they? Mm -hmm. The things that we start with or the things that we think we're going to do 
it go, we often go down a different path or a different direction. And, but we're able to pull all of those experiences into, into that. I can think of so many situations where I never thought I would use this skill set, And now I'm teaching it to people like <laughs> online marketing. <laughs> Who knew when I was learning all this stuff, I was like, this is making me crazy. I can't, you know, I was just doing it to build my own business. I had no idea it would be teaching to other people. So, but that's often how things happen. All, the evolution of what we do, right? That's it. So I love it. Um, so let's talk about some of the things that you really your teachable um, talking points here that you really want to go into. And one of them was you said there's one non-negotiable. Tell my audience about the non-negotiable. This is something that I have been talking about for over 20 years now with my with clients in whatever context I'm in speaking to leaders. When it comes to being a catalytic leader, there is one non-negotiable, and that is having a teachable spirit. That is a choice. The decision that you make every single day, that I make every single day, <laughs> If I am I going to be the most teachable person in every room I walk into? Oh, in every awesome. conversation I'm in, in every situation I'm in. The, the fact of the matter is, if we have the right teachable spirit, we can learn from anybody. Right. We might learn what not to do, mm -hmm. but that can be incredibly valuable. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's the mindset. Mm -hmm. I, I love this because if you think about it, I mean, there are just lessons all around us everywhere we turn, even from a, even from a child, we can mm -hmm. learn, right? Yeah. So true. So, yeah. Teachable spirit. That's a good one. That's a really good one. You also talk about evaluation. This is one of my things that I really love to talk about, because if we're not in constant evaluation of what we can do better, how we can mm -hmm. be better, how we can make changes, uh, I feel like we get stuck, we get stagnant, we get complacent, mm -hmm. all of those things that don't serve us. So you want to talk more about that? the evaluation? Absolutely. There's this idea that experience makes you better. And I think that's a myth. I don't mm, think experience you can, you, necessarily you can experience makes you better. doing all the wrong things. Absolutely. It doesn't what, make you what, better. If, what if you just continue doing the thing over and over that's and over right. again for 20, 30 years and you're doing it wrong? There are it a lot of people that do that. <laughs> there are. And there are also people who take one year of experience and they repeat it 10 times and they present themselves as having 10 years experience. No, yes, you don't. Sir. You have one year's experience yes. that you've just repeated over and over again. Yeah, we use that a lot in the small business business space. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's experience great. does not make you better. Evaluated experience makes you better. Yes. And that's why evaluation matters so much, because that tells us what we need to change. Growth only happens on the other side of change. But how do you know what to change? Mm -hmm. That's where evaluation comes in. What I walk my clients through is three questions that my team has been using for, for years, decades. Hang on, now. I'm going to take some notes. Okay, Absolutely. Go. <laughs> so the three questions that we use consistently, and my team can tell you these questions in their sleep because they've heard them so often. After anything we do, we're asking these three questions. What went right? Mm -hmm. That's the first one, right? I want to celebrate the wins. I want to celebrate what went right. This is often where leaders miss it. Because we want to look beyond. We want to, we see the next hill. We see the next problem that needs solving. We want to run to that. No, you got to stop. You got to celebrate the win. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. When you do that, when you pause, you write it down, you are capturing data that mm -hmm. you will use later. And I'll come back to that in a minute. What went right? Second question, what went wrong? And this is where we immediately want to run to first, but it's second. Right. What, what went wrong? What did not go the way we expected, right? What could I have done differently here, right? I'm going to capture this. We're going to write this down. We're going to capture it. We're going to evaluate it. We're going to go through it. And the last question, how would I make it better next time? How would I make it better next time? That's when you process the first two questions. Now, let me tell you why these three questions matter. The first one is training your mind to recognize wins. What I want to do in my own life, in the life of every leader is train their minds to recognize and celebrate wins. What you focus on is what you get more of. Yes. 
I want to focus on wins. <laughs> I want more mm. wins, right? So we're going to train ourselves to do that and capture those because there are going to be moments in every leader's life when you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get discouraged. Mm -hmm. You're going to wonder, is this worth it? Is it working? Should I just go work at McDonald's and flip burgers? I mean, what, you know, <laughs> is, is, is this really worth it? Mm -hmm. And in those moments, when you get swamped by your feelings, your emotions, you need an objective data source that you can go back to and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me pull out this wins journal that I've been keeping for the last year. And every week I capture what went right. Yeah. And let me go through these data points here. And you know what that's going to do? That's going to reinforce that mindset that, you know what? You know what? I, there, I am making it. This is making a difference. You know what? This is working. I have moved the needle. I didn't think yes. I had. Yes. Yes. So that's why it's so important to capture what went right in an outside place where you can pull back and refer back to it and say, you know what? This is working. Mm -hmm. But you don't just celebrate the wins because sometimes things go wrong. Right. Right. And you want to deal with that. You don't want to shy away from it or ignore it. <laughs> Bad news doesn't get better with age, mm -hmm. as a friend of mine says often. <laughs> it's not like a fine wine. Like you got to you got to move toward the problem if you're going to yeah. solve it. Define it, call it out mm -hmm. and then process this so that the next time you're in a similar situation, you will have already thought through what would I do different next time? This is so good. You know, one of the things I'm thinking about as you're saying this is, have you ever read the book by Dan Sullivan, Gap in, The Gap in the Gain? Somebody was just telling me about that book it's the other day. It's such a good book. It really kind of resonates with me around what you're talking about here because he talks about entrepreneurs in particular. They're always focused on what they don't have, what they don't have, what yeah. they don't have, right? What's the goal? What's, what's the goal? And they don't ever look back and say, oh, wow, <laughs> look at everything I've accomplished. Look at everything that I've done that I didn't even realize, like, because you're going yeah. through the motions. And so what, what really resonates for me with this is if you can learn to keep this in perspective and evaluate and see how far you've come and mm. look at, like you said, look at your wins. To me, this is where a lot of happiness will come from yeah. with what you're doing. Yeah. Because if you don't learn to love the process, you will be an unhappy camper most of the time, right? <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> and you, you will be like, and, and I always say, focus on the solution, not on the problem. Of course, yeah. you have to focus on the problem to get, you know, to, to get through it. But most people focus on the problem and then that's where they stop. They yeah. don't think about, okay, what can I do? Because there's always a solution. Always, always, yes. always. Right. Yes. So I love this. This is so good. I wrote this down. I'm going to put this on my board because I think, okay, my mastermind clients, I need to use this with yeah. my mastermind. Absolutely. Clients. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. You talk about being family focused. I, I I just shared with you right before we started recording. I have a brand new grandbaby that's going to be born today. I'm like, I'm trying really hard to be with you today. <laughs> but I'm super excited it's okay. because my family is, I, that is so important to me. And it's such a, I mean, why do we do all of this, right? Yeah, we do this yeah. to have better our life and better our family's life and all of that. So let's talk about being family focused. And I know as a pastor, as well, as well as a coach, um, you know, that this is something you really, really hit home on with people and really hit hard on because we can get stuck in a lot of stuff that takes us away. So, okay, go ahead and, and talk about that. You know, when I talk about this, often type A driven leaders, you know, I'm about an hour west of Washington, D.C. And as you might imagine, there's quite a few type A driven leaders in this orbit here. Uh, when I talk about being family focused and making that choice, I, I usually get some pushback. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's typically uh, responded to with something around, well, yeah, if I do that, I'll be living out of my car in no time. That's an interesting perspective. Mm hmm. Because when I think about this, I think, you know, no matter what you do or where you do it, the fact of the matter is one day somebody else is going to hold the title that you hold. Somebody else is going to sit in the mm -hmm. chair you sit in. Then what? Then what? Right. I mean, I, I, by virtue of what, what I have do done. What do you have left? Right. For the last 25 plus years working in the local church, I've spent a lot of time with people at the end of their lives. 
And you know what I have never heard anybody say in those moments? I wish I would have worked more. (laughs) I wish I'd spent more time at the office. Right. If only I'd hit a few more of those KPIs. Yeah. I mean, boy, if I'd hit this achievement or this this objective. You've never heard that? I've never heard that. It's astounding, isn't it? Right. You know what I have heard over and over again? Regrets. Regrets around relationships, Mm -hmm. conversations that were never had, Mm -hmm. apologies that were never made, reconciliation that was never achieved. Mm -hmm. I've heard those. I've heard regrets over time not spent with family, time not spent with a spouse or with kids. Right. And, you know, the thing the thing is, we get to learn from that Mm -hmm. again. If we if we approach every situation and every conversation with a teachable spirit, we can learn from anybody sometimes what not to do. Right. If I learn from those conversations about the power and the value of family, then that means you and I and everybody I talk to about this can make those decisions differently now. We can choose to be family focused. You're a person of faith like I am, Anne. Mm -hmm. For us, you know, scripture is very clear about this. Like the first priority in our lives is to be our relationship with our heavenly father. If you're married, your spouse is to be Mm -hmm. your second priority. If you have kids, your kids are third. And after that comes everything else. Yes. The problem was when we start playing Jenga with those. Ah, <laughs> that's like, a good point. Oh, yes. Hey, let's let's move those around. My kids are the most important thing in right. my life. How many Can times I, have you heard that? I would right? love to talk about this just a minute too, because yeah. um, a lot of people, okay, so I'm not a big believer that there's work-life balance. I mm-hmm. think that yeah. there are times the pendulum has to swing far to the right and your business has to take priority. And there are times the pendulum swings to the left and, you know, your spouse or your kids or whatever that is, it takes priority. We're not really talking about that, so to speak. Yeah. I think there is a lot, a lot of people think that they can't have success unless they sacrifice everything else. Yeah. And that is just not true. It absolutely is not true. Yeah. I think the real key is to is to be able to really be self-aware enough to know when things are swinging too much one way or too much the other way and to pull yourself back. Do you do you agree with that? Is is that absolutely. making any sense? Oh, absolutely. And this is where conversation happens. Right. You yes. know, every week we do a weekly, re- weekly review, the upcoming week at my mm-hmm. home. Right. And we've done this for years with, with our family, with two teenage daughters, with one now at college, uh, you know, everybody's moving different directions and, you know, who's doing what, when, who's taking who, where, you know. Oh, I have not been doing that. I failed. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, now it's just me and my husband. So there you go. Hard, go <laughs> this ahead. is just survival for us, right? Like who's right. doing what? Who's I remember those who? days. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, it, it's in those conversations when if things start to tilt a little bit too far one direction, mm-hmm. this is where we have openness and we have that last 10% of honesty. You know, the first 90% of honesty is so easy to give, uh, but the last 10% of what we, what we mm-hmm. often hold back because it's uncomfortable and mm-hmm. we're afraid it'll, it'll breach a relationship. But you know what I've discovered is the last 10% is where the magic is. Mm. That's where transformation is. Mm-hmm. And so we have to have that level of conversation with our spouse, with our family and say, mm-hmm. Hey, you know what, when you, when we feel this starting to tilt too far, let's call it out. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest about it because there are going to be those ebbs and flow times where, Hey, for a season, right. I've got to tilt this direction. And for another season, I'm going to tilt a different direction. But everybody knows what's going on. It's not, oh, well, he always, oh, well, she right. always. No, 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 no. Because we talk about it. Mm-hmm. So good. So, so good. This is such powerful stuff that people, I mean, literally, you could apply this today and it could potentially transform something for you or create a big change that maybe has been needing to happen. I, I really appreciate you sharing this so much. I can tell you've been a pastor. So <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things you and I talked about when we first got on a call and we were discussing this podcast is you shared a story about your older daughter <laughs> And how that impacted you and what you do. And would you like to talk a little bit about that story? Sure. And, you know, it was about three and a half years ago now. Uh, my older daughter started getting some headaches and they were pretty severe. 
And we took her to the doctor as you do and, and got her checked out and everything seemed to be you know pretty normal. We thought maybe she's developing migraines. I was about that age. She was 14 at the time when I started developing migraines. And so we thought maybe that's it. Well, they didn't, they didn't go away and the medicine didn't help. And so we just kept dealing with it for several weeks and it kept going back to the doctor. And ultimately they did some scans and discovered that she had a brain tumor on the back right side of her brain. Now, this was completely unexpected. There's no family history. There's no reason for this. It's just a genetic anomaly. Well, two days later, they they take they rushed her from the from the ER to the hospital down the road that had the the care that she needed. Two days later, the pediatric neurosurgeon took the tumor out, and two days later, she's home. And then we waited, and we waited for weeks for them to do the biopsy, get the biopsy results. Uh, to tell us what this was. Turns out it was a very rare form of cancer. Only about 50 teenagers a year in the world are diagnosed with it. Wow. Uh, and that that was the, the beginning weeks of a journey for us uh, because we to go through treatment, uh, we had to relocate uh, to Baltimore uh, to live at the Ronald McDonald house for a little while while she was going through proton radiation. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, during that season, there were so many lessons around what matters and it really drove deep this whole family focus that we've been talking mm-hmm. about. It, I was not worried during that season about what was going on at work. <laughs> I was not right. worried about, hey, are we are we hitting our goal? Are we hitting the objectives or the KPIs? You know, I wasn't I wasn't focused on that. I was focused on what mattered most. And what I'll often talk about these days is, you know, here three and a half years later, I have not forgotten those days. Right. And I don't think I ever will gratefully, praise God, she's doing great. She's at college now. We've gone three and a half years with no recurrence. She's outside the window of likely recurrence. And we're so- God is good. He is so good. And we are so Mm -hmm. grateful for that. But every experience is one you can learn from. And God never wastes one. What did I learn during that season? So many things, but one of them is this, that one day somebody else is going to hold the title that I hold and Mm -hmm. sit in the chair I sit in. What matters most are the relationships with those closest to me. Am I investing in those at a level where when somebody else does sit in the chair I sit in, are those relationships going to still be there? Yes. Wow. Well, we could end on that because that was incredibly powerful and so true. And I really hope that people take that to heart and they really hear the words that you shared because it is what matters. It, mm-hmm. it is what matters. And you love your business. We want to be successful, all of those things. But if you have nothing else in your life, yeah. what good is it? What difference have you really made? And so I, this has just been so great having you on and sharing your wisdom and your expertise. And I love that obviously you're a man of faith. And I think we could use a lot more of that in mm. the entrepreneur mm. world, so mm. to speak. So yeah. I I love that we talked about that. Awesome. Any last words or parting thoughts that you want to share? You know, the, the one thing that I that I just hit over and over again is what we said toward the beginning, which is that having a teachable spirit is a daily choice. And if I could challenge your listeners with one thing, it's that you get to choose that doesn't cost you anything. (laughs) You can make that choice every morning. Choose to be the most teachable person in the room. Choose that learning posture. And when you do, you'll see that make a bigger difference in your life than just about anything else. I totally agree. Um, You know, I, I even think about all the years building businesses. And the one thing is I was always teachable and I was Mm. always looking for what I could learn and how I could grow. The thing that I didn't really think about, but this was a, this was something that happened as a result of that. And I'm speaking strictly business. You're Mm -hmm. talking about, you know, in all areas of our life, but is it always kept me very cutting edge yeah. And it kept me above the competition and things that now I talk about. Now I teach people at yeah. that time, 
I was just, that was just my nature and my spirit. And I always tell people I got bored. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that entrepreneur thing, I get bored That's easy, <laughs> but, but I, but I realize it, in looking back and everything that I've learned now, I realize that that is really what it was. It was yeah. the teachable. And even today I'm, I'm teachable. I'm always looking for growth. I'm always looking to learn. And, you know, I, one of the reasons I love doing my podcast so much and being on other people's shows is because, gosh, I learned so much every single time, every time I to learn from brilliant people like you. So, you know, it's just such an honor to get to share what I've been privileged to learn. You know, I stand on the shoulders of all the people who have poured into and invested in my life. Mm -hmm. And we have a choice, you and I, we can try to be a reservoir and hold in everything that's been invested in us, or we can choose to be a conduit of it. I love and it. And we can share what's been poured into and invested in us and share that with all the people around us for their benefit. I find that so much better. Yeah. So good. Oh my gosh. So good. This is such a great show. Thank you so much for being on with me. And thank you so much for having me. It's truly been a joy to be here. And it's been so great getting to know you. I was a guest on your show as well. And what is the name of your show so people can go check it out? Absolutely. It's Catalytic Leadership. I try to keep it pretty simple. <laughs> there you go. That's his brand. So go check out his show as well. And we will put this, put all the links and everything with the show when it uh, as we release it. So, But thank you again for being here. It's just been so much fun. And I, I'm so grateful and so blessed to have you in my life now and make a new friend. That's a me too, man. Thank you. All right, everyone. Until next time, uh, make sure you check out past episodes and also make sure that if you're not subscribed to the show, you subscribe, you hit that notification so you don't miss one episode when I interview brilliant people like Dr. William Attaway and bring you nothing but value on Expert in You Show. And if you would like to book a call because you need help growing your coaching, consulting, or expert business, you can book a call at acarden.com. You have an amazing day. God bless you all. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this episode, I want to invite you to go check out a free training that I have at expertinu.us. It is a training that I have on how you can get ultra premium dream clients, scale your business, get more freedom, and really simplify your business and multiply your money. So go check that out. And again, that is expert in you. Dot us. I want to thank you for being here with me this week. I hope you found massive value. Please always leave a comment, feedback, or a question. We check them all. And I want you to go rock your business and make sure you join us again next week. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.